This video is going to introduce two algorithms that can try to help you find optimum Hamiltonian cycle circuits. Uh, the only problem is that neither of these algorithms is perfect. They are very fast to implement. They're f relatively easy to understand, but neither one is going to guarantee the optimal Hamiltonian circuit. In fact, as far as I'm aware, there is no such fast algorithm that it will guarantee to get you the best Hamiltonian circuit. In fact, the only algorithm I know that is guaranteed is if you just try every possible combination and see which one is the fastest, which is a very, very time uh, uh, constraint on those problems. It's way too much uh, difficulty to try to do. So. These two algorithms, like I said, they're quick to use, uh, they're reasonable, but just understand they're not perfect. So the two algorithms, they're called nearest neighbor and cheapest link. And so let's start with the nearest neighbor on top here. Notice how I'm using the same graph for both examples. So you can kind of compare the two answers that we get, see which one you think is better in this case. So for nearest neighbor, we have to pick a starting point and anytime I actually give you a problem here, then I will tell you the starting point. That way everyone has the same answer. And so the idea is you're gonna go ahead and look at your graph and you're starting at Cal State Fullerton right here. And you say, okay, I wanna know which of my neighbors in that case, the other four uh, colleges here, which of them is the closest? And by closest, we mean the smallest weight. So you see, you can go to Cal State Fullerton up over to USC for 25, or you can go to Cal State Fullerton straight to UCI for two, or Cal State Fullerton down to UCLA for five, or Cal State Fullerton around to Cal State Long Beach for 11. So if you compare all of those, the shortest of them is to go to Cal State Fullerton over to UCI for a length of two. Now that we have that, we're just gonna repeat the process until we get back to the start. Noticing that we can never go back to a place we've already done other than when we're finishing up the problem. And we're always gonna pick the smallest that we can get. So now I'm at UCI and I look at all the different things that leave UCI. I see a two, three, seven, and eight. The smallest of those would be a two, but that would take me back to the beginning and I'm not ready for that yet. So I ignore the two and I choose the three. So that's the next path I'm gonna travel. After this, I'm at UCLA and I see five, three, four, 14. The three would be shortest, but again, that would be kind of going back. Can't use that there. Four is next, so we're gonna use that. Now we can keep looking at all the different ones we have there and decide what's, what's going on, however, at this point in time, there's only one place we haven't been yet, which is USC. And then we always have to get back to our starting point, to Cal State Fullerton. So that would be our approximation for the Hamiltonian circuit that is optimal. And so it would be Cal State Fullerton to UCI for two, then down to UCLA for three, then over to Cal State Long Beach for four, then to USC for six, and then finally back to CSUF for 25, and the total weight, two plus three plus four plus six plus 25 would be a 40. Again, there is no guarantee that that is going to be the overall best possible Hamiltonian circuit, but it's pretty reasonable and it's very, very fast to get the answer. This is uh, an example of what's called a greedy algorithm because you're always choosing what is best for you right now. You're not looking ahead to see if you could possibly do better by making a different choice now. And greedy algorithms, again, they're very easy to implement, but they're definitely not going to always give you the best answer. Okay, uh, the next one is called the cheapest link algorithm. And so what we do there is we don't have any starting point for this. We literally just look at the graph and we take whatever is the shortest edge 
anywhere on it. So I'm going to pick the two. Then I look at all the remaining edges and I pick the shortest one left, which is three. The only restriction is, the only restriction is, you cannot close off your graph creating a cycle until you are finished. So I can add the four right now, it's the next smallest. However, if I were to try to add the five, I would have a problem because I'd have a closed off triangle here and that's not gonna give you a Hamiltonian circuit if it's closed off. So we need to make sure that we don't include the five there, but we can include the six. The next one up would be seven. But if I put the seven there, again, I'd be closing off a triangle. The next one would be the eight. However, if I close off the eight there, I'd be closing off a little rectangle over here. The next one's 11. And if I do that, I would be again closing something off too early. Then I could do 14. That would also close things off. And so it turns out that in this particular case, we end up with the same answer for both methods, but that's not always gonna happen. It just really depends on the specific numbers, the specific weights that are given to you in your circuit. So regardless, these algorithms here, you should be expected to do, you'll do either one of them and compare them and see whether you get a better answer for one or the other on a given problem. And this is what we use in our class to find optimal Hamiltonian circuits. We will also want to find other situations using other algorithms, but this is specifically what we have for optimal Hamiltonian circuits.